Welcome to Holy Trinity Church as we prepare in a moment for worship. Um, as you'll have seen on the slides, if you can't read the writing very well, in each pew there is a code that you can scan and you can read the words on your phone or your tablet or whatever electronic device you have. And um, for those who wish to, some badges will be given out that you can make, colour them in and clip them together. And Patrick will be explaining more about that during the service, during the, uh, the sermon. So we prepare our hearts and minds, remembering that prayer at its basis is opening our hearts to be loved by God. So I pray that today you will be able to open yourselves to the love of God as you hear the voluntary play.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also you. Very warm welcome to all of you and those who are watching online. This week we celebrate Christ the King. So this is why we're all in wonderful white. And, um, and hopefully you'll enjoy the, the hymns and the words that remind us how wonderful Jesus is. But we begin with our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom those secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. O King, enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name. Lord God Almighty, in our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for this week. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. Amen. We sit for our first Bible reading. Reading from the book of Daniel. A reading from the book of Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and 10,000 times, 10,000 stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the ancient one, and was presented before him. To him was given dominion, and glory, and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. Thou shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Patrick and Anthony now bring our gospel reading. <clears throat> Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. But then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Oh, so you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. I'm just coming out of roll for a moment. I feel the need to pause before moving on to my sermon. A story is told, I think it's a well-known story, of the Queen when she was a young girl. Apparently she was once out and about wandering about on one of the royal estates when somebody who didn't know her came up to her and said, who are you? Oh, I'm no one, she replied, but my father is the king. <laughs> Knowing the truth of who you are and to whom you belong can be very empowering, especially if you're the daughter of the king. But for us today, as we celebrate Christ the King, we're invited to discover the truth of who we are by first acknowledging the truth about who God our Creator is. So we just heard Jesus say in our Gospel reading, for this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. There's a clear theme right throughout Scripture that truth is discovered not just by individuals in isolation, but in community. And Jesus often prompts this through his discussions with those who both agree with him and who oppose him. And out of those conversations emerges the truth. Cleverly, he often asks questions. We had a fantastic example today where he simply replies to Pilate and asks the question, did others tell you about me? Do you ask this on your own? He's wanting the truth to be revealed. And our conversations and discussions as a church family and community, whether we agree or disagree with one another, are moments when it's possible that the voice of Jesus might be speaking the truth to us. As Kay mentioned earlier, we've got available today some little kits to make a badge. Very grateful to Libby for making this wonderful example of a badge. I'm going to hold it very carefully so that those on the cameras, if you can zoom in at all, this will, this will test Phil's technical capabilities, so we can see this badge, that would be great. So this badge has some very important words on it, beautifully coloured in by Libby, and it simply says this, I am loved by God. And there is a sense in which that is the most fundamental truth that there is. The truth of who you and I are is that we are a person who is loved by the God who created us, the God who is love. So anyone who wishes is welcome to make one of these badges today. The kits are in the corner just over there. You can go and use them at any point, even at coffee afterwards if you wish. But the idea is this. Do what Libby did, make a badge, then give it to somebody else. So I'm going to keep this now, Libby, if you don't mind. And the idea is to make a badge and give it to somebody else, to remind us that, as I said before, it's not in isolation that we discover the truth about who we are. 
It is in community together. It often takes somebody else to remind us, especially when we're in a dark place, that we are loved and valued by God, the God who created us. But when we talk about truth, of course, we need to acknowledge that truth is a contested thing. This can be seen just with a cursory glance at any social media postings. There are battles over truth today, but this is nothing new, of course. There have been battles over what is true as long as human societies existed. But arguments between competing truth claims just seem to be a bit more prominent these days, don't they? So, for example, there are debates currently in Parliament, in the House of Lords, about whether religious assemblies or collective worship should be required in non-faith schools. And the debates often involve lots of different competing truth claims. Winston Churchill, interestingly, seems to have quite accurately predicted the situation we're in. Back in 1943, in the middle of the war, he gave a lecture in which he said that he felt in the future battles wouldn't be fought between nations but over ideologies. The most significant powers in the post-war Western world he envisaged wouldn't be nation-states or empires but ideologies. He said the empires of the future will be the empires of the mind. And I think we're seeing this playing out now. We see it in the so-called culture wars, often a conflict between those who are more liberal and more conservative in their outlook. We see it in the propagation of conspiracy theories, especially, as I said, through social media. But today we proclaim a truth, which is that God's love cannot be defeated by any nation or empire or army. It can't be defeated by any opposing ideology or conspiracy because Jesus has shown us that God's love is stronger than death itself. We heard these words at the end of our first reading that Sarah read for us. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. In the end, the truth of who we are is to be found in the truth of who God is. We're invited to belong to this truth. But Jesus reminds us at the end of the Gospel reading today, we do have to listen to his voice. There are many competing voices in our world today. How do we make sure we're listening to the right voice? Well, we listen together when we gather as today, but also we do need times when we listen alone. Make sure there is a moment in your day, in every day, when you simply stop and you focus your attention on God and offer some prayer and ideally read some scripture as well. Every day, even if it's just for a few moments, listen to the voice of Jesus, the voice of truth, which will affirm the truth of who you are. We often say in services, don't we, the Lord is here, his spirit is with us. And the spiritual writer David Adam, I was reading a book of his on uh, my retreat last week, and something really struck me that he said. He said, this is not a request, it's a fact. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. We can listen to the voice of Jesus, not just because we have to try very hard and find it for ourselves, but because Christ our Saviour is already present with us in our lives, in the situations of our lives, in this place of worship before we've even entered, in the world beyond as we leave. Christ is already there. Our task is to tune in and listen to the voice, the voice of truth. And I want to finish with this prayer written by David Adam. Christ. This is not a request, but a fact. You, Christ, are here with me now. Christ, open my eyes to your presence. Open my ears to your call. Open my heart to your love. Open my will to your command. Amen.
Please stand able for the creed. And uh, I apologize that the key point, which is your confirmation of believing the creed, is not on the slides. So when I say, this is the faith of the church, I hope you will say with enthusiasm, this is our faith, we believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So when we get there, I look forward to hearing that. Let us <coughs> declare our faith in the, res the resurrection of Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness, he humbled himself, was obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the intercessions. We invite you now into a time of intercessory prayer. Please pray with me in response together. Say, may the kingship of Christ guide them or us as indicated. The words will be placed up on the screen as we pray together. We gather today to worship you as one body in Christ. We pray for the global church that your will and work may shine. May the kingship of Christ guide your church. We pray for those in authority, those who lead countries, territories, and regions around the world, that they may not manipulate truth to retain power, but seek peace and justice for all those under their care. May the kingship of Christ guide them. We pray for those exploited or abused by those in positions of power, that truth will triumph and they would be freed from oppression. May the kingship of Christ guide them. We pray for those robbed of their freedom for challenging injustice. May the kingship of Christ guide them. We pray for our church that in confidence we would share your truths so that we know and in humility seek out the truth we have yet to learn. May the kingship of Christ, Christ guide us. We pray for those who have recently departed, especially for Patricia Ainsworth, John Mayberry, Joanna Shawbrook, and Dick Brooks. We pray for one another and ourselves. We pray for those in our community that are sick, for those caring for them and loved ones worried, especially Peter Rowland, Jez Barnard, Glenn Thomas, Neil James, Wendy Data, and Sam Data, Liz Murphy, Jeff Bridgewater, Anne Bernard, and Joyce Shotton. May you give comfort to the sick and the grieving, that the truth of your words will allow us to be open to truth and eager for wisdom. May the kingship of Christ guide us. Loving God, may we constantly seek your truth in all that we do. Amen. I have some bands of marriage to declare. Um, I don't have their photographs, I don't think. I'm sorry about that. Um, the bands of marriage are published during this service, so. I publish the bands of marriage between Megan Lorna Rawbone and Joseph Alexander Holmes, both of this parish. 
If any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it. This is for the first time of asking. So, no objections, so let us pray for this couple as they prepare for their wedding day. We thank you, Father, that people are so committed that they are prepared to spend their life together. We pray that the preparations will go well and that the time of their living in their married bliss will be for many years. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand as you are able for the peace. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these tokens of our money to offer, the fruit of our labor and the skills you have given us. Take us and our possessions to do your work in the world. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image to crown all of creation. You gave us breath and speech and with the angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. And now we give you thanks because you anointed Jesus Christ, your only son, as priest and king, crowned with thorns, he offered his life upon the cross that he might draw all people into that kingdom where he now reigns in glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners and with a love stronger than death he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died he came to supper with his friends and taking bread he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence this his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your majesty, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. 
blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And now, remembering that love that God has put in our hearts, we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. In a moment, Patrick and I will stand um, at the altar to deliver you your Holy Communion, and I will consume the chalice on your behalf. Is the prayer ministry this week? I'm not sure. But if you did need someone to pray with you, I'm sure at the end of the service, just speak to one of the sidesmen. Oh, there is, is there? Lovely, thank you. It's just sometimes people don't realise prayer ministry is happening at the Beckett Chapel. So when you've received communion, it's quite easy to pop across. Pray for yourself or for those in need at this time, maybe members of your family. So thank you for that. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ shed for us all.
For those of you who make Christmas puddings, you'll remember this particular prayer. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may be by you plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. For those younger members, it sometimes used to be called Stir Up Sunday when you had that prayer. Now we say together the prayer after communion. God of all grace, your son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace and in all our weakness sustain us by your true and living bread who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Now the notices. Next Sunday is the beginning of a new church year, Advent Sunday. And so there will be a service here as usual, but there will be at 5 p.m. Advent carols, which you can see on Zoom, those who are watching from a distance, and there will be refreshments afterwards. And speaking of Zoom, H would love to see you, any of you who can go on their computer after this service. For those who are at home, they enjoy that fellowship they get by seeing a few of us on Zoom when we get home. So I invite Patrick now for his notice. Thank you, Kay. Yes, just a reminder that we're continuing a, a period of review of this 10 o'clock service, the new approach to this service, which combines a service that used to take place uh, in the parish centre with the parish Eucharist that took place here, bringing both of those together. The review period goes until February next year, so there's plenty of time, but it's really helpful if you can give us your feedback as we go on. You can either do that verbally by speaking to myself or Kay or one of the church wardens. But there is also a form that can be filled in. Uh, there's a link to that on the uh, weekly bulletin that goes out on a Saturday. Uh, and I think we also have some paper copies of the form at the back of church as well. Yes, they're over by the servery. So if you uh, would rather do it the old fashioned way, uh, you're welcome to do that. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Kay. So please stand if you are able for the blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with those you love now and always. Amen. Amen.
to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.